John here guys and today we're talking about the Creality Direct Drive Conversion Kit for your Ender 3 3D printer. So what is Direct Drive? Well, the Ender 3 comes shipped with a Bowden tube extraction setup. The little white tube that travels the length from your extruder to your hot end um, has to have that filament travel through that path. That means when it's pushing the filament back and forth or retracting, it's moving that entire length by moving that entire setup all the way next to the hot end you are now directly driving that filament only about this much space and if you want to know what that does for you if you're printing flexible filaments like tpu or anything else flexible you can now print them at a much much higher speed and get much better quality so the Ender 3 actually can print TPU filament, no problem, but you have to do it slowly. I usually print TPU with the Bowden tube at about 20 millimeters per second. Well, what if you could go all the way up to 50 or 60 millimeters per second and get less stringing and a little bit of improved quality? That's what this kit is going to do for you for about 30 bucks, and you get all of this extra stuff. It comes with almost an entire printer's worth of spares. You get an extra hot end, an extra thermistor, an extra temperature sensor, an extra heat sock two extra fans the fan bracket it comes with an extra stepper motor i mean goodness so you really don't even end up using a lot of that stuff so you just get to bank all those spare parts only for 30 bucks now the direct drive conversion before this was sold by some third-party companies some of them over a hundred dollars and it seemed like the end-all be-all upgrade for any ender 3 printer and it kind of is that made me think it was going to be very difficult but it's not Creality simplifies it for you, making it only require adjusting eight screws. That's it, eight screws, and they actually give you every single tool needed. So I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to put this in. So let's take a look. So what you're actually going to need, if you already have an Ender 3, is <laughs> really just this bracket. And, you know, the stepper motor here, you can actually transplant the one that you already have over, uh, but you could keep this as well. So that means you actually end up with a lot of extra. This comes with a full hot end um, spare unit. So, and it actually has all the wires to plug in. So I'm not actually going to use this. So this is essentially going to be a spare. So I'm going to end up with two spare fans a spare heating element, um, heating block, a spare um, thermistor, a spare temp sensor, and a spare nozzle and heat sock. So all this I'm just going to take off and it is going to be a spare set of everything because I'm going to strap on my stock stuff right here. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to have to run these wires. So there's zero wiring to do if I do it that way. And then I can just keep all this other stuff for spare. So 35 bucks, you get the conversion kit, you get an extra motor. I'm probably going to use this one and just leave the other one in this in the stock spot. As you see here, it also comes with a new extruder, but it's the same kind of stock kind. So you just end up with a spare of all that stuff too. In case anyone's curious, the length of tubing for this is 72 millimeters. First thing I did was use a three millimeter hex and loosen these two screws, then, then remove this tensioner bracket off of the end. Once you have done that, you're gonna wanna take the belt off. Once you have the belt off, you're gonna use that same three millimeter to loosen these two. And you're gonna wanna use this wrench to hold it in the back. You don't have to take them all the way off, just about halfway off, then you can kinda Go like that and get it off this is actually my diy printed um, direct drive i'll talk about that a little bit more later so once you have that then you're just deinstalling the same four bolts for the hot end because we're going to move that onto the other bracket so here we go there's one two three four Family. I'm gonna actually move this over to my other printer 
here you can see the 3D printed bracket. All I did was install an extruder onto this bracket and the stepper motor onto here. And then you run a little PFT tube down here, which will go into your hot end. I'm gonna actually move this over to my PV2. So on this extruder, it doesn't actually use a little screw in. It just has the PFTE tube going here. So from here, we're gonna we're gonna put that in, and then we're gonna slap this in here, like so. Now we're gonna put the hot end on, and try to get it all the way in there. And then we're gonna just screw it on. And because I measured this, it should pretty much line up with the holes. It looks like it does. I'm gonna take my two millimeter driver and attach this on here. I just lost some of the washers. Okay, so now I've attached these two. I can go ahead and move this into place. Then I can attach these other two screws to get the fan on. Now I'm just gonna use this extension cable where the extruder um, cable would have plugged in here. I'm gonna have this extension that's gonna run and um, plug into this here. Now all I have to do is put this on here and attach the belt. In order to get this on, you're gonna to have to do the same thing where we loosen these up so you get enough room. That is gonna be a three millimeter. And to be able to actually spin it, I'm gonna use this little one on the back. We're gonna to have to tighten these back up once we get it on. Once I have these top two nice and loose, but don't take them all the way off, it should fit on here now. I'm just gonna kind of get the bottom on and then get the top on. And before I tighten it up, I'm gonna attach the belt. So you have these notches down there and you just go into where the little brass insert is facing down. This should be fairly easy to do with this tensioner off because we're gonna actually put the tensioner on in a minute. So, so here it is, everything attached. Just a few screws really for this kit. You wanna make sure that you can still move this carriage over with just a finger. It does feel tighter than before so this really does scoop this um, tensioner very close here um, I see why pe some people were saying the belt won't fit it will fit but the way I had to do it was leave this off put the two notches of the belt on and then slide this on it basically goes all the way butted up against this rail so there's not a lot of room and it is a bit tight then you want to adjust these two screws holding the thing and the eccentric nut down under here with your little wrench to get everything nice and tight. You can see I can still move it with the with one finger like that. For direct drive, I moved the spool holder to where this is facing the front so I can go straight down into there. And you can see it has the little metal insert that helps guide it in. Let's see if it's any easier to feed your filament in. So when you're feeding it, I'm just gonna hold this down and boom, we're done. It only has to go about an inch or two, so it's super easy. This lines up perfectly. So let's do a test print and see how it comes out. So what is it like been printing on this direct drive for a few weeks now? My goodness, I'm constantly surprised at just what kind of output this Ender 3 can put out. My PLA before I was printing about 50 millimeters per second, now I can go up to 80, 90 millimeters per second, no problem. So the speeds are increasing, the quality is slightly increased. It just makes it a little bit easier to dial in your settings. So I do recommend it. Once you install this, go recalibrate everything. Go to Teaching Tech's calibrations page and run all his easy calibrations. You'll get your flow, your retractions and everything. Just to give you an idea, the retraction settings I run are, I used to run about six or seven millimeters per retraction at about 30 millimeters per second speed. I reduced that down to about two and a half to three millimeters of retraction distance at about 25 millimeters per second speed. Now, the other interesting note is that I did use Teaching Tech's um, thing to recalibrate my flow. I ended up reducing the flow to about 88 to 90% on most prints um, because it just flows so much better with this reduced distance of this. 
it makes printing so much faster. You know, when you can print more than double the speed, the chances that something is gonna mess up, that you're gonna have a power outage or whatever gets reduced greatly. Of course, you get all your stuff faster and you get less of that annoying stringing. So in my mind, I kept thinking, this is the end all modification to an Ender 3. It must be difficult, right? It must be like putting a new engine in a car. It's not. It's eight screws, guys. It's so simple. And once you have it on there, Everything in regards to tuning becomes simpler. Everything in regards to setting becomes simpler. It becomes um, from a good printer to an even greater printer. You can get results um, much closer to those much more expensive things like the Prusa or the Soval, but like the Soval takes up a ton of room if you only have a little bit of space in your house. Like I do, I actually prefer to run two into threes because I can fit them on a very small table that's out of the way and that's kind of how I do it. So I'm gonna go over converting, um, this is the $30 solution that you buy to convert your printer to direct drive. There's also a DIY version that you can print out. I'm gonna use that solution to convert my Ender 3 V2. So stay tuned to that video coming up soon. What in the comments guys, are you already on direct drive? Were you thinking about it? Now is an easier time than ever. Go ahead and get this kit, get all these spares. You'll have enough spare parts to be printing for years. If anything should ever break, you'll already have the spare parts.